Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're doing electrolysis again, and today our goal is to collect some gases. To be honest, the only reason we do electrolysis here, and mostly electrolysis, is because it's pretty fun, and it's nice to learn about. One interesting thing I've learned throughout this is that I've been wrong time and time again, and also, that we have not produced any sodium hydroxide at all. In fact, most of what we've produced that has been recrystallized is just regular salt. And most of the solutions are just containing a bleach of some kind, a sodium hypochlorate, or a hypochlorite. And that's all dependent on the time it's been processed. Although with using our metal as a way of destroying those, things might be a little bit more complicated. As the chlorine from those can destroy the metal and then basically go become chlorine or probably even bond with the metal even. Another thing that's very interesting is the fact that we have not produced any chlorine. Which basically means that it definitely does not become chlorine gas. When it destroys the metal of course. It also means that we have not actually produced any hydrogen chloride. Anyway, a simple breakdown of what's going on. First and foremost, you produce a little bit of sodium hydroxide when the reaction first starts. This is then quickly turned into hypochlorites and then into hypochlorates, and then back into salt. So there's a very inefficient cycle just continues on and on, until eventually all the chlorine decides to leave. Which takes a very long time because the chlorine is leaving as this process occurs. And there's also other stuff going on, like the anode and cathode acting as oxidizing or, um, I believe it's redox or something like this. We're basically they're removing an electron or adding an electron, that's basically all oxidation means. So basically, this time we have not produced any sodium hydroxide, we have not produced any chlorine, we've more than likely just produced oxygen and hydrogen the past several times. However, there was one time that I definitely did produce something that was not very fun, and that was when I electrolyzed vinegar. That, that was that was not good. I, I did not even post the video on that because uh, maybe I'll do it again later. But, uh, basically, what happened from that is that we got some kind of very scary abomination from that. That being some kind of chlorinated gas, <laughs> which is not fun. And that was from salt and vinegar. If you're wondering, it's not just vinegar itself. Straight vinegar would do absolutely nothing. It's so covalent. So what you're witnessing here is that the metal electrode we put in, which is getting destroyed by chlorine, is basically turning this water into a sludge. Now you'd think that this would be like red or something because, well, it's iron oxides. I don't know why it's not red. I, I've still not found an answer to this. I, we're just calling it green rust, okay? In fact, it ends up becoming blue, and then a very black mud later. It's weird. And then it finally ends up red. But you can see as this process goes on, it gets more and more dark as the metal gets destroyed by the hypochlorates and hypochlorites and also gets oxidized. And then some kind of weird sorcery happens with the iron oxides in this water which causes them to be green. For some reason. Although this is literally described as green rust. Um, I need to read more about iron oxides. <laughs> In fact, I was reading about sodium hydroxide, the industrial production methods for it, and have learned how I can actually get our process to be uh, 10 times better. We will in fact actually be able to produce chlorine and sodium hydroxide if I do it the way that I am thinking of. Now several things actually affect what's going on here. Temperature is one of them. Another is current density and maybe also the ratio of salt to water. Current density basically refers to how much energy you're putting through it. So basically this is your amperage per unit of volume. I run 5 volts and I don't actually know the amperage on this. Maybe I should go check real quick. It would appear to be 1.55 amps. Or Now as far as the rest of the system goes, any gases produced should just be trapped in that plastic bottle on top. And then using this ball valve, we should be able to seal it so the gases cannot escape as easily. 
although they will definitely still escape. And uh, this tape is a really poor job. It definitely did not work at all. <laughs> so my solution for next time is probably just to use some actual sealant of some kind on these pipes, guys. Tape, not cut. And of course, next time I actually do expect us to collect some gases. So after quite a long time of running this process, probably around three or four hours, which is definitely not enough. It probably takes around a day or two if you do it this way. In fact, if you give it even more time, then it's probably going to get closer and closer to being a hydroxide solution. Anyway, after a few hours, I said, okay, this is good. <laughs> We're done. We have to move on. We have to make a video. And honestly, that was a couple days ago. And it's today now. Like three days ago. So I, I could have been running that whole process for three days. Which I, I think I should do one that's a much longer um, setup. So after the process was complete, it was finally time to unseal it. So these electrodes are contaminated with this wonderful slop that we've created, this um, hypochloride substance, this uh, basically, let's just call it bleach. Yeah, so this bleach iron oxide mixture of stuff, yeah, disgusting. Well, there's a, a simple solution to not make it disgusting. And that's where you process this blue liquid into a sludge and some clearer liquid through filtration. Which is one of the many separation methods that exist. There is a lot of these methods. And uh, separating things is very important. It, very important if you... If, obviously it's very important. What am I saying? But yeah, we go from this disgusting blue color to a very strange orange color. It's a tinted orange for some reason. Very fascinating, this stuff. And the filter collects a filtrate, which is this wonderful sludge, aka very precious iron oxides that we put a lot of effort into making. The final stage of processing is moving it onto this wonderful polymer sheet where it can dry in peace. Now surprisingly, the final product was very red, but also, even more surprising, was the fact that there was also sodium crystals in it, which means that I failed miserably, and it's disgusting. <laughs> it looks, whenever there's sodium crystals in an iron oxide or a metal oxide in general, it is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen, and uh, it's just not great. Now here we go for the final part. At the time, I actually thought there might be some hydrogen and chlorine in it. And after all, the design was the most innovative of all my designs so far. We went from literally using a weird funnel-shaped collector system to now having an actual sealed system, which is impressive. Not only that, in the previous experimentation, something odd happened whenever I shined the UV light on it. However, this time, I can confirm for a fact that that was just absolutely nothing and Definitely did not happen. In fact, with 100% certainty, that did not happen at all. However, I still performed all the necessary tests to determine if we actually did produce anything here. Since this bottle already contains water droplets, that means any hydrogen chloride produced should just be absorbed into those, forming hydrochloric acid, of course. And then we can just add all that to water. So I rinsed it with a little bit of water. Not a lot, because we don't di dilute too much. Too much dilution is not gonna give us any results. First test to test if it was water was, well, I accidentally had some on the thing, so why not just touch it? <laughs> and absolutely nothing happened. This was definitely not hydrochloric acid at all. The next test, which couldn't be any worse, was literally using a pipette on baking soda, which this blew air into the actual liquid and made it look like there was something happening, when there really is absolutely nothing going on there. How do we mess up this badly? How? <laughs> now, in theory, if we did in fact produce any hydrochloric acid, it would be neutralized by this. And I do believe that absolutely nothing happened. We produced nothing. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoy these videos, then uh, yeah, maybe you consider member. Nice, maybe do that. But uh, you don't have to. I'll keep making these. 
And I'll see you all next time. When we finally actually succeed because I finally figured out what I'm doing. And I won't spoil it here. But membrane.